Live. So I've got Periscope over here and I got Facebook over here. <laughs> Doing a double stream thing. I tried to do something earlier this morning. It did not work. I was uh, using Zoom and for some reason it did not record and it did not stream onto Facebook, which I don't understand because I pushed the little stream onto Facebook button on Zoom. But I might have did something wrong or it's their fault. What do you think? So if I keep on looking back and forth, it's because I'm looking at two cameras, just so you know. <laughs> I'm not crazy. Anyways, the topic of conversation, I think, uh, is these malls. Um, I saw this about three years ago in the, uh, over at Ridgedale. I live in Ridgedale, I live in Minnetonka by Ridgedale Mall in the western Minneapolis suburbs. And they were doing all sorts of construction and traffic was really slow. All the kiosk people were just complaining about the, there's no traffic in here. There's nobody around. They're not making sales. It's, they're struggling. And I saw that things were changing. I think over in Southdale, they added condominiums in Southdale, I think. I don't know. I don't live over there, but I heard about that. And uh, over in Ridgedale here, they're building condos all around the, the mall. And then they're creating activities like iFly, that, uh, that virtual skydiving thing. They built that here. Um, they're, they're building some other things. I don't know what they are because I'm not really following on all the uh, community news and all that kind of stuff. But they've also, I, I did see that they're building a park. So they're taking part of the parking lot and they're going to put grass there, make a community playground kind of thing. And they put a loop on the east side of the, the mall, you know, one of those little uh, roundabouts, turn to keep the traffic flowing. I kind of like those. It takes some getting used to, but. So anyways, I'm a little frustrated because I was talking with my friend uh, Stanley over in Singapore, which I think is fascinating that I can talk with him over there. It's a 12 hour difference, 10, 12, flip it around. And uh, he uh, was just finishing, uh, finishing up and he's ready to go to bed by now. I'm just waking up. Anyways, I was trying to have a conversation with him and we we're talking about how this stuff has changed so much. And it's hard for a small entrepreneur to go into a shopping mall and set up one of those kiosks. It's just, uh, it's not affordable anymore. It's just, it's too hard to do. You know, I, my background is in the event industry. So I see what's happening at the malls. What's happening is they are shifting and turning into be more entertainment complexes and also uh, sort of uh, community centers. So they're building that out more. I believe that they're going to start doing destination weddings. Well, not destination, but they're going to do weddings. They're going to do concerts. They're probably going to have that stuff going on there. So the malls are going to become event centers. And uh, they'll basically rent space and you can do an event, maybe an after hours event or even a day of event. They do some of that stuff. But I think it's going to ramp up because the reality is, is if you want to buy a pair of Nike shoes, you can go on Amazon and get them. If you want to buy a coffee maker, you can go on Amazon and get it. So what's happening is they're going to start doing more experiential things in the malls, maybe coffee tastings and things. It's, uh, it's sort of like an infomercial, only it's live and in person. And I think that's going to start happening because uh, when you're on the Internet, you don't get to smell and taste and feel things. All you can do is see and hear. And uh, it's just has, it hasn't got the same experience. And uh, time is a commodity, and it happens so fast now. You know, people that have jobs, they, they have to go to work and they work that uh, eight hour, 10 hour, 12 hour day, and they can only get paid so much because their employer can only compensate so much. And, uh, you know, they got to pay for health insurance and workman's compensation, and they've got taxes and stuff they got to pay for, maybe uniforms and all that kind of stuff. So there's all these other expenses, and it's just hard for a, a business to make it these days. The big companies, they're real diversified where they've got stores all over the place so they can kind of make it work for them. But an owner operator, it's really tough. It, it would cost them twenty to forty thousand dollars just to open up a store in a mall. And then they're committed sometimes for six months or a year and it could uh, could drain your bank account. Anyways, I'm not gonna do these too long because of the time frame, so I keep it a little bit tighter. I just wanted to mention that uh, my friend Stanley, we we're trying to do this online and uh it didn't work, so I'm going to redo it by myself. 
perhaps we will have that conversation um, again tomorrow. It's just interesting listening to someone over on the other side of the planet in Singapore having similar situations with all the malls and retail because of this uh, information technology that's, that's happening. It's real, and uh, you may have sensed it, but it's, uh, it's changing. A lot of the stuff is going online, and uh, it's, it's hard, hard to get jobs these days because you need to be performance-based. We've got jobs, actually in case you uh, are looking for something to do before the holidays, make some extra cash, looking for somebody to sell uh, booth space in our trade shows. However, it's commission-based, so it's results-based. We can't uh, afford to pay non-results. Got to have results. Okay, that's it. I'm talking too much. You want to know more about me, just Google the keyword, Magic Brad. That's it. Peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, Facebook. <laughs>